they got us outnumbered. It was not my fault. That's why I refused to settle out of court. Miss Maxwell, I realize that a woman of your importance would not be contesting a matter of $400 if it didn't involve principal. He ran into me. Well, we'll uh, let the jury decide that. Now, as I understand it, just uh, prior to the accident, you were parked at the curb outside your father's law firm, Maxwell, Kelstrom, and Dorsey. I object. Your Honor, counsel for the plaintiff is in error. It has already been established that Miss Maxwell was parked in front of Lawson's firm. I'm terribly sorry, gentlemen. I suppose that proves the old saying that four heads are better than one. Counsel seems to be in error again. The correct saying is, two heads are better than one. <laughs> I guess this just isn't my day. I, I apologize, Miss Maxwell. Lapse of memory. This uh, sales slip I uh, obtained from Lawson Furriers indicates that that's where you were prior to the accident. This sales slip indicates that Miss Maxwell purchased an $8,000 full-length sable coat just a few moments before she got into the car. Objection, Your Honor. Honor. My client's purchase is irrelevant to the matter at hand. Uh, Mr. Scott, what is the purpose of your line of questioning? Your Honor, I was just uh, trying to establish the possibility that the purchase of a full-length $8,000 sable coat may have excited Miss Maxwell so that it uh, affected her driving. That would hardly excite me. What would it take to excite you, Miss Maxwell? Objection, Your Honor. Honor. I refuse to answer on the grounds that might incriminate me. Objection sustained. The jury will disregard the fact that Miss Maxwell purchased a full-length sable coat for eight thousand dollars. It'll take brain surgery to get the jury to disregard that. <laughs> You know, some you are a lousy driver. That's why I got a good lawyer. Yeah. Thanks, Annie. mind waiting in my office? Uh, Penny Nichols. A uh, pleasure. Miss Penny Nichols. A real pleasure. Well, uh, Billy boy, when did you get up? Just this morning, thanks to you. What did you tell that parole board? Oh, uh, forget it. You just made a little mistake. They need those cells for guys who make big mistakes. Well, you didn't make no mistake getting me out, Mike. As soon as I get a job... Oh, hold it. I got a job for you right here. Ask for a man by the name of Mahaffey. You start tomorrow as a process server. How did you swing that? I just told him there weren't any bad jockeys, only bad horses. My someday, uh, somehow, uh, hold I, hold I, hold gotta... I, I, I got a client in there. Oh, uh, hey, Billy. Yeah, Mike? Give my love to your mother. I can't. She don't get out till next month. That was very sweet of you, getting him a job. Oh, next month, I gotta worry about his mother. You're a nice man, Mr. Scott. Call me Mike. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Have a seat, please. Now, what can I do for you, Miss Nichols? Well, actually, Penny Nichols isn't my real name. It's just a stage name. Oh. My real name is Hilda Hollendorfer. Well, you will never get that on a theater marquee. I can't even get Penny Nichols on a marquee. And do you know why? Why? Because Bunny Easter stole my act when she was on the bill with me in San Diego. Who's Bunny Easter? She was a nobody like me. But now she's a big hit. And with my creation, it took me six months to work up that act. What kind of an act is it? Well, I'm a dancer. An exotic dancer. I wear this special costume I designed. And this engineer was even nice enough to help me. Engineer? Well, I start out dressed as a missile. And on the first stage, just like a regular missile, part of me comes off. I see. Then I do some more dancing, and as the music builds, I get to the second stage. And then another part of the missile comes off, and you can see my legs. Oh, that's 
And then we get to the last stage. And that's when you... Call me back. Well, in the third stage. In the third stage, that's when you realize I'm not a missile. Uh, Miss uh, uh, Nichols, uh, as unique as this theatrical act of yours is, I don't think it's legally possible to restrain anyone from doing something similar. But it's not just similar. She stole every bit of it. It's my act. I had to pay for a choreographer and an arranger for the music and the dress designer. I thought the whole thing up by myself. Hmm. And Bunny Easter is doing the identical act? Not only that. I auditioned for a job, and they accused me of stealing my own act. Miss hmm. Mizzle, uh, uh, Nichols, have you ever had the act copyrighted? No. Let's hope Bunny Easter hasn't either. You're taking the case? Oh, uh, where can I reach you? The Stratford Hotel. I'll be in touch. Soon, I hope. Yes, uh, soon. Invited. Hey, was she listening? There's enough people doing my act now. Uh, uh, Miss Maxwell, do you come apart in three stages? You're safe. Goodbye, Mr. Scott. Bye-bye. Somebody stole her missile. She didn't look like she had anything missing. Oh? You're looking for legal aid, Miss Maxwell? I believe the judge said $420, right? Oh, well, you didn't have to deliver it in person. You stooped so low to win the case, I figured you'd need it right away. Well, here, I thought you came just to see me. I see your conceit isn't reserved just for the courtroom. No, I never go anywhere without me. And I'm sure no one can come between you. You never know. You're going to condemn it, Inspector? It's just about what I expected. Well, I don't imagine it's as pretentious as your father's suite of offices, but it's for me. It's all there. A Freddie Hodges forgery case. To Mike, you're still tops with me, Freddie. Freddie Hodges. You see, you aren't the only one who likes me. Are you for real? Try me. I'm having a party tonight. Bully for us. Do you still have time to rent a tuxedo? Well, uh, hardly, but I do have a mortician friend who owes me a favor. 400 West, Long Island, 9 o'clock. Seared in my memory. What time are the others leaving? There won't be anyone else there. Anything else I can do for you? Yes. Bring me a receipt for my money. Miss Maxwell will be right down, sir. Thank you. Pretty. Well, I have to return it by midnight. Let's join the others. Others? You said we'd be alone. I wanted to make sure you'd come. And I had plans. So do I. No, I don't believe that. No, I don't. Ah, my four opponents. And their wives. Oh, yes. That's a new one. So is a wife. Well, I'm sure they never played on the bill in San Diego with Penny Nichols, if that's what you mean. You know, she was right. You were eavesdropping. Don't worry. I won't steal her act. Too bad on you, but it'll look good. Gentlemen, I think you all know Mr. Scott. Gentlemen, we've met. Ladies, this is Michael Scott, Mrs. Kelster, Mrs. Dorsey, Mrs. Mrs. Graham, and Mrs. Gilbert. Ladies. Mike's the one who beat the pants off us today. I'll bet there were a lot of women on that jury. Mike, this is my father. Daddy, this is him. Mr. Maxwell, Mr. Scott, I read the transcript of the trial today. Oh, I just got a little lucky. You wouldn't have been so lucky if I'd been there. I don't doubt that, sir, but it would have been worth it just to see you in action. My tactics wouldn't have been as questionable as yours. I admire your resentment, sir. Anything I can't stand is a good loser. Neither can I. How would you like to join my firm? I told Daddy his firm could use a good, tricky lawyer. Thank you. I'm very happy with my own practice, sir. Well, from what Judy told me, your practice doesn't... Have... Well, I guess you could say that. As a matter of fact, my office does look a little lived in, even a little died in. I don't handle any big companies or big corporations. I've always handled little smaller cases, and they're stimulating. 
Maxwell, Kelstrom, and Dorsey can be very stimulating, too. Mr. Maxwell, I've had offers to join other companies before. I, I, I like my independence too much. I don't know whether I could conform to decadent corporate rules and procedures or not. I told you you'd like him, Daddy. I do not. He's just being a tricky lawyer. Come on now, stop fencing. What's your price? My independence. I wouldn't want company policy dictating how I should handle cases. I've never held my men down, have I? No, no sir. Well, Dad, now that you both see eye to eye, let's talk money. What, um, what do these other companies offer you? Remember, I can check. 10,000 a year less than you're gonna pay me. Why should I pay you more money? Because I'll need it if I'm gonna be running around with her. It's a deal. Uh, you know, I'm a little mature to be starting at the bottom. You'll start high enough. How high? Top level. It's a deal. May I? Uh, please do. Thank you. Maxwell, Kelston, and Dorsey. And Scott. And Scott. Glad we left the party. I hope we weren't rude. I wanted to be alone with my fiance. Fiance? Any objections? Kind of impulsive, aren't you? Any objections? Does every fellow you invite to a party become your uh, fiance? No. Only the right fellow. What makes you the right fellow? How do I know? I'm just a woman. Yeah. You know the same thing happens with a man? Are you trying to tell me something? You know, I, I think I'm trying to tell me something. Like what? that it's about time I settle down with a nice, wild, impulsive, rich girl. Anybody I know? I think so. Her father's a member of my law firm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mike, I just called from Robinson Textiles. They've, uh, they've agreed to settle uh, on your terms. And I must admit your approach was right. I never thought anyone could bluff a company that big. Uh, but here, here's the topper, Mike. They were so impressed with you that they, they may want us to represent them. I, oh, oh, an engagement ring? <laughs> Congratulations, kids. Thanks, Dad. Uh, oh, Mike, don't say anything to Kelstrom and uh, Dorsey just yet. They, uh, they seem so insecure lately. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh... I didn't realize you were still, uh... Excuse me. Hello, Mr. Scott's office. I think we're embarrassing Miss Talbot. Isn't she a doll? She's a good secretary. I think you picked her. I did. Uh, yes. Just a moment, please. It's a Miss Nichols for you. Thank you. Uh, hello, Penny. No, no, the message was correct. Yes, I have changed my office. Oh, uh, could you be here at 2 o'clock? I'd like to commit your act to paper. No, oh, thank you. I'll see you then. Uh, Miss Talbot, make a note. Miss Penny Nichols at uh, 2 o'clock. And please reserve the conference room. Uh, yes, sir. Shall I notify Mr. Maxwell and the others? Uh, no, we'll need privacy so my client can take off her clothes. Stage. The uh, uh, second part is discarded. Uh, Miss Nichols places her hands behind her head and uh, I'll leave that part blank. I'll fill it in later myself. Thank you. Robinson, 
After we iron out the points of the contract, how about a game of golf? Fine, Maxwell. Mm -hmm. I don't mind telling you that the Robinson Textiles is the account we've been after for years. Right, gentlemen? Right. right. Now, our board of directors has always been impressed with the public image of Maxwell, Kellstrom, and Dorsey. And Scott. Oh, yes, and Scott. Now, that man was the deciding factor. Positively brilliant against us in court. Well, might could be a credit to any firm. <laughs> to drop the case. I don't have to drop anything. Might be reasonable. It reflects on the dignity of the firm. Penny Nichols is a client. It's unethical to drop her just because Robinson Textiles doesn't approve of her occupation. You don't have to worry about Robinson's Textiles any longer. They're not retaining us. Well, that I'm sorry to hear. Okay, all right, you forget about that. But we have other clients. Who knows who's going to be the next one to pull out? When we made our deal, you agreed I could operate in my own way. Like a strip teaser. Our biggest client is Mother Hubbard's cookies. We have a public image to maintain. And I have some principles to maintain. You, you talk to him. I can't get through to him. Where'd you get such a stubborn father? He likes you, too. Well, I've got to admit he has a point. I hate to blow a big account like a Robinson's textiles, but little people have a right to be protected, too. I've seen Miss Nichols, and I don't consider 38, 24, 36 little. Oh. Are you jealous? Yes. <laughs> That's what I like about you. You don't play games. And you better not. Yes, Your Honor. Mm, there's a full moon tonight. So? We could take Dad's boat and run over to the island, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I can't. I business. Can't it wait? No, I promised Penny Nichols that I... You're seeing her at night? Well, I promised Penny Nichols I'd go see Bunny Easter. Who's Bunny Easter? Well, Bunny Easter is the girl who stole Penny Nichols' act. Another one of those? Now you're sounding like your father. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Well, you're jumping to conclusions. I'll jump any place I want. No, oh, Judy, dear, I'm sorry. We'll take the boat right tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, Bunny Easter may have something for you to do. Well, now you're not making any sense. Of course I don't make any sense to you. I've got clothes on. <laughs> The Club Onyx is proud to present that heavenly body, Miss Bunny Easter, and a dance especially dedicated to our boys at Cape Canaveral, Miss Bunny Easter. Thank you. 
Uh, no, thank you, nothing. You're paying the minimum. You're entitled to three drinks. You drink them. <laughs> the show push the booze. Telling me not to say class. <laughs> oh, they sure love her. They sure do. This guy here tonight taking pictures of her. Where? Over there. Oh, he's gone. Good evening. Who are you? I'm Michael Scott. I just saw your act. I'd like to have a little chat with you. I'm an attorney. I represent Penny Nichols. Is she still making noise? Well, it is her act. So let her prove it. You played on the bill with in San Diego and she originated the act. So? Well, that means you had access. Gave you an opportunity. Don't talk down to me. I'm familiar with quite a bit of legal nomenclature. Oh, yeah. I have an education. Obviously. I used to be a school teacher. Really? Nursery and first grade. There. Hmm. Well. Wow. Schoolboy Eddie Bridges presents teacher with going away present as she embarks on new career. Every holiday, little Eddie sends a present to my apartment. Last year, I got a frog. Oh, that was nice. School teacher, huh? Mm-hmm. Tell me, what was a nice stripper like you doing in a racket like that? Just unlucky, I guess. Miss Easter, it's a pleasure to be dealing with someone with such intellectual capacity. An apple for the teacher? Either that or a restraining order for the stripper. It's my act. You stole it. Will you get out? Okay, okay. You know, it's a good thing for the kids you're no longer in the classroom. Did you ever hear of principals? Only in school. Then I heard about money. Will you get out of here? Hey, what's the beef? He's a lawyer. Penny Nichols sent him. Beat it. Get out of here before okay, I... Okay, okay. No problem. No hey, problem. Wait a minute. Are you the guy that was taking pictures of Bunny? That's right. Danny, it's my act. You stole it. Give me that camera before I break your arm. Okay, no problem. My brains are in my head, not my fists. Well, it'll be all over the floor if you don't get out of here. And don't intrude on this lady's privacy no more. Any more. Any more. Right. And if you don't think I can break you in half, just start something. Go ahead, start something. You got a lousy nerve getting this lady all upset. Oh, chicken, no guts. Fortitude. Fortitude. <laughs> All them lawyers think they're so smart. You know, it's a good thing I came by before he got away with this. Hey, the film's gone. It's empty. All right, say it. Say it. Who do you think you're being quiet at? Home! I hope it comes out. I have very little light. Use that fast film like I told you? Yep. Yeah. It'll come out. Pretty hot stuff, huh, Mike? I think so, George. But you develop it just like it was a training film for the YMCA. Miss Easter? Yes? Telegram. Oh. Happy birthday. But it's not my birthday. Well, I got a present for you anyway. Look at this, a summons! A what? You said it was all right to do her act. It still is. Big man! Oh, shut up. You can't talk to me like that. Who are you? Hey, look, there was a little funny guy here. It looked like one of them dead-end kids. Now, go after him and give this back. And, uh, break his arm. Oh, I'm sorry, Billy Boy. I'm doing it to be sorry, Mike. I really served it at summons. They must have stuck it back in my pocket. 
All right, forget it. Sorry I let you down. Why don't you sack out? I'll uh, come back and see you later, okay? Mike, would you do me a favor? Yeah, what's that? When I get out of this place, would you be the first one to autograph this cast? <laughs> oh, you bad jogging you. Miss Easter is being sued for plagiarism by script dancer Penny Nichols. Miss Nichols has retained the state old law firm of Maxwell, Kelstrom, Dorsey, and Scott. You see, Mike, you're embarrassing the firm. Dad's right, darling. I didn't really interfere before because it was none of my business, but now it's different. How? Well, because it's embarrassing me, too, your name being linked with strippers. Mike, you've got a great future. Why jeopardize it for something as unimportant as this? You really want me to give it up, knowing what it means to me. I don't want to lose you, Mike. You mean it's a case of you or her? What? Well, no, don't, don't say it like that. We don't play games, remember? We're so right for each other, Mike. Judy, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. But how do I explain it? Oh, Penny's a woman. She'll understand. I mean to myself. If I drop the case and I'll sell out, I, I won't be me anymore. And if you don't, I won't be me anymore. And Kelstrom and Dorsey won't be them anymore. You can't come in, Mr. Scott. Am I intruding? Get out of my office, Cannon. Now, take it easy, pal. I just came here to settle our little difference. Well, I'll see you in court. Mike, it's all right, Miss Talbot. Mike, the man is here to talk about a settlement. Oh, are you his boss? Nobody's my boss. Mike, you can at least listen. Lady happens to be right. Will you get out of here? What a temper. Please. Now look, Scott. Money's been bugging me and Penny's been bugging you. We're both in the same boat. Just two guys trying to keep their dames happy. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I say something wrong? Maybe not. My daughter and Mr. Scott are engaged. Oh, facilitations. You know, my bunny's got a lot of class, too. I mean, style. She used to be a school teacher. Why, she can read a newspaper just like a man. Well, I hope she can read a subpoena. Oh, I thought we had that all settled. Now, look, I'm ready to pay your client $5,000 to get off my back. How much are you going to pay Billy Vail? Billy Vale? Who's he? Right now, he's a hospital patient. Oh, yeah, that ex-jockey the cops talked to me about. I thought he must have fallen off a horse or something. Well, he's got a fractured arm, and I wonder how he got it. You know, I'd sure hate to be one of them process servers. A guy can get killed that way. Are you threatening me? Oh, no. I happen to have the money right here. Well, it's no deal. Now, get out of here. Mike, <coughs> we'll be in touch with you uh, later on, Mr. Cannon. It's all right, Mr. Maxwell. Sure is a pleasure to consult with the titular head of this here firm. You know what's wrong with you, Mr. Scott? You just ain't got no class. I'll tell Mr. Scott you're here, Miss Nichols. Thank you. It's your duty as an attorney to inform your client of the offer. What about my feelings? Even that hoodlum thought you were involved with her. Well, what do you care what he thinks? He's nothing but a... Yes, Miss Talbot? Miss Nichols is here. Well, send her in. I didn't have an appointment with her. I asked her to come when I read this. It was my idea. Hmm. Come in, Penny. Hello, Mr. Scott. Miss Nichols, this is Miss Maxwell. Mr. Scott's told me so much about you, I almost feel I know you. I feel the same way. And, of course, you've met Mr. Maxwell. Oh, hi. You never did get to see the beginning of my act, did you? Uh, I saw enough, thank you. Penny, uh, Danny Cannon just left here. Oh, was that him? Mm -hmm. He offered $5,000 for you to get the lawsuit. I'm not interested. But that was only the first offer. Perhaps we can get him to increase it to ten. But, Mr. Maxwell... And if he won't increase it, I'll put in $5,000 myself. It's not the money I'm interested in. It's the act. It's mine. I thought the whole thing up. I should think $10,000 is enough to buy a new act. No. All my life I've been pushed around by the Danny Cannons. And even the Mr. Maxwells. I've been called a dumb cashier, a dumb waitress, a dumb this, a dumb that. And now when I think something up and prove I've got a brain, someone wants to take it away from me. Mike, 
I think you should advise your client. She's making a mistake. And, of course, you agree with your father. Yes, I do. Gee, Mr. Scott, I don't want to get you into any more trouble. Don't fire him, Mr. Maxwell. And don't you be mad at him, honey. He's too nice a fella. Thanks for all you've tried to do, and, and don't worry about me. I'll get another lawyer. Goodbye, Penny. And it was still nice to have met you. Goodbye, Mr. Scott. Goodbye, Penny. It's better this way. And it's going to get better and better and better. Yep, better, better, better. Where are you going? I got a summons to serve. If you go out that door, you're through. Mr. Maxwell, it's indeed been a pleasure consorting with the titular head of this here firm. Besides, I got no class. Yes, sir, that's all of them. Thanks, Clive. Sure, good to have you back, Mike. Real good. It's been dead around here with, with you gone. No girls, no nothing. No girls. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> Ain't served that summons on, on Bunny Easter yet, huh? Ain't served it? Yeah, I tried to. It's like trying to get Nasser in a delicatessen. <laughs> well, if you need any help, I'm available. Yes, sir, I'm available. I may call on you, Clive. Sure, good to have you back. Good to have you back. Yes, sir. Real good. Real good. Good to be back. Good to be back. Real good. Hello? Mike, this is George. Oh, hi. Hi, George. Uh, say, how'd the film turn out? Oh, great. Hey, Mike, if you ever need a job, just give me a call. You make a pretty good photographer. Well, hold on that film. I'll take a look at it. Right. Uh, say, Mike, uh, this Bunny Easter is really something. How about an introduction? Well, I'm having trouble meeting her myself. Goodbye, George. Oh, hi, Penny. Hi, Mr. Scott. Did you serve Bunny? Well, I, I can't get in to see her. They barred me to the club. But how are we ever going to get her in a court? There, I told you I'll serve her, and I will. Now, don't you worry. Gee, nothing's going right. I just came from the vet. Someone nearly killed my dog. What happened? Some nut drove his car right up on the sidewalk. Missed me by inches. Almost broke my arm. Did you get the license number? No, it happened so fast he didn't even stop. Hmm. Penny. How would you like to spend a few days at my apartment? I beg your pardon, Mr. Scott. Oh, no, 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 dear. I just want to be sure you don't end up in a hospital. Huh? That car, Cannon, that just may not have been an accident. Here, let me give the keys. Don't watch this show. Push the bulls. Come on now, snap into it. Come on, come on, look alive. Oh, uh, oh, I beg your pardon. I'd like a reservation, please. Table close to the stage. Sorry, we have a lot of reservations. We're all filled up tonight. Mm, that's too bad. Well, I'll stand over there by the bar. I'm a great fan of Miss Easter's. You better wait outside. I'll stand over there. You'll learn to like me. I'm a big tipper. But, sir... It's okay, Herb. I'll take over. Good evening, Mr. Scott. I presume you wish to see Bunny Easter? Now, how'd you guess? Well, let me escort you to her dressing room. You gotta be awful careful around here, you know. There's a terrible epidemic of broken arms going on. Well, you know how epidemics are. Sooner or later, they're wiped out. Spaghetti and meatballs. No, if it's as good as the spaghetti and meatballs you had for breakfast, fine. I guess I don't know how to cook many things. Yeah, but what you do know, you do good. Thank you, Mr. Scott. I told you to call me Mike. I'm just not that kind of a girl. Mm. I'll get it. Julie. What's 
happened to you, Mike? Oh, everything. Everything's happened to me lately. And you're still on the case, huh? Yeah, I'm still on the case. Well, Mike, I've realized that anything you do from now on is right with me. Oh, Judy. Have you missed me as much as I missed you? Oh, more. Mm -hmm. Well, you won't exactly be marrying into a law firm like Maxwell, Kelstrom, and Dorsey. No, but someday it might be Scott, Scott, and Scott. And Scott. What's the matter? Well, Judy, you got the wrong idea. There's nothing between us. I'm only living here. Judy, you gotta let me explain now. Come on, be reasonable. Oh, gee, I feel terrible about this. I'll go to her and explain everything. Oh, it's all right. I'm a big boy. I can handle it myself. Right now, you look more like a little boy the teacher kept after school. Teacher? School teacher? A penny, you're a genius. Gee, nobody ever called me that before, Mike. I mean, Mr. Scott. Go warm up the spaghetti and meatballs. Well? No, don't rush me. Don't rush me. I'm concentrating. Dallas? The capital of Texas is Austin. Well, I got Alabama right. Go ahead, ask me another. When am I going back to work? Do you realize my career is being stifled? Oh, after that beating we gave that Scott guy, he'll be thrown in the towel any day now. Come on, ask me another. Uh, ask me Illinois. Yeah? Hey, it's some kid. Said he used to be in your class. His name is Eddie Bridges. Oh, no, not another flower pot. What do you want, kid? Another flower pot. Oh, get rid of him, will you? Uh, hold it, kid. Hey, this might be some good publicity, like the last time. Yeah, not a bad idea. Sure, you know, it keeps the school teacher angle going. Uh, kid, uh, we'll be around all afternoon. Come up around 2 o'clock. Yeah. Okay, goodbye, Eddie. Goodbye, sir. Did I do all right, Mr. Scott? Ah, oh, you did just fine, Eddie boy, just fine. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, gentlemen. Hi, Mr. Scott. Hello, Eddie. Are you ready, boys? This is for you, Miss Easter. Oh, thank you, dear. I have something else for you, Miss Easter. Not another frog, I hope. No, ma'am. A summons.
This court will come to order. Your Honor, you've just seen my client perform her dance. Now, with the court's permission, I'd like to turn on that projector and show the defendant, Miss Bunny Easter, performing the same dance. Your Honor, how long will this continue? Surely the state has more pressing cases. This is nothing but a travesty. That's for the court to decide. It's just a publicity stunt. I deny that. What are you going to dream up next? Gentlemen, this is the last time I will remind you to address your remarks to the bench. Scott, you may proceed. the plaintiff rests. Your Honor, a dance is not patentable. We're not dealing here with a scientific discovery or an invention. Who owns the waltz? Who owns the Charleston? I'm inclined to agree with counsel for the defense. This court is being asked to adjudicate what is in the final analysis just a dance. Your Honor, this is much bigger than a dance. It transcends even the bizarre nature of the case itself. What we are involved with is one of the most important principles of our judicial system. The right of the individual to own his own creation and reap the credits and benefits therefrom. Mr. Scott, are you implying that it is of earth-shaking importance who gets credit for creating something as insignificant as the performance we've just witnessed? Your Honor, one of the most acclaimed decisions ever rendered in our courts in this country concerned a carpenter some 25 years ago. He merely made a very slight change in the shape of the handle of a hammer. Now, as insignificant as that case was, to this day, Judge Walker's decision... Judge Walker? No! That was my decision. That's in every law book, every school, every... You've made your point, Mr. Scott. Every individual has the right to own his own creation. This court rules for the plaintiff, Miss Penny Nichols. What do you want? You were breaking something. Well, you can't win them all. But don't worry, baby. You still got me. Big deal. Congratulations. We won, Mike. We won. <laughs> Hey, baby, why do you know they finally got Danny Cannon for breaking arms and bribing witnesses? Gave him three years. That's my honeymoon present. Uh, our honeymoon present. Hurry up, will you, darling? You're wonderful. You're not so bad yourself. Goodbye, Mrs. Scott. Penny, is this right? By George, she's got it. I won't be long, darling. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us. Look forward to seeing you again next week. Good night. <laughs>